What's going on guys, Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I made these. This is a 64 unit storage cube wall thing. It's kind of like a Kallax unit from Ikea. It's for a friend of mine who does crafting and she's got tons and tons and tons of craft material just all stored away in a garage, taking up space in a house. So she asked me if I could build this and I said obviously yes I can, it's going to be great and we painted it in a cornflower vintage blue colour and it looks absolutely amazing. I had so much fun building it. You might have seen the little preview of me putting it together, the time lapse of me building the cubes. Uh, in this I'm going to talk to you about the process of how I did that, how I did it so quickly and easily and then the process of painting it which isn't as quick and easy, it's one of the worst things that I ever did. I hate painting but it needs doing so um, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how I do all of that in this video. So let's go to it, I'll get over to the PC, get myself a cup of tea and we'll go through the process together. So the first thing I did was I marked off where each piece was going to be attached and then I marked off on one piece the bit that I needed to cut out for the skirting board. I then went and cut them all out and when I came upstairs I set my bevel gauge to 90 degrees to make sure I was putting these level and then I used my glue and mitre bond trick to glue the bottom of these pieces on there. Basically you run a bead of glue uh, with leaving gaps of about a centimetre and then you put the mitre bond in those gaps and the mitre bond acts as the nail or clamp to hold them together just while the glue sets and then on the top part I run a bead of glue and then I just stick a screw through the centre of this board because then that will hold while the glue sets. After that it's just a matter of repeating the same process over and over again until you get to the top of the board. One tip is to use a scrap piece and use that as a spacer so you know where you need to line everything up. It just makes things a little bit quicker for you. I'll jump ahead now to the end of the build because you don't need to watch me go through this process over and over again. This top part was a little bit more difficult because I couldn't get to the top of the shelving units to put a screw into the top. So what I had to do was I had to glue the bottom parts in as normal using the mitre bond and glue trick and then on the top part as you'll see in a moment I have to just try and get some glue squeezed across the top and then I used mitre bond across the joint to hold that in place while the glue sets. This was a major pain in the backside because trying to glue above you is uh, very difficult so to do that I recommend holding the bottle upside down to start some glue coming out don't squeeze it too hard and then you can turn it the right way up while keeping that pressure and it'll still let you push glue out while facing the bottle upwards. Attaching the sides was pretty straightforward all I had to do was make sure it was lined up and on the top part of this right hand section I could actually get the drill in at the side and I could attach these just screwing them in. Uh, I didn't use glue on these sections because it held against it with the wall anyway so it's not really going anywhere and there's not going to be that much pressure put on the sides. For the bottom half on this right hand side I just ran a bead of mitre bond across the joint kind of like you would with a bit of silicon, same as what I did with the top section and then I just sprayed it and held it into place while it's set and this holds it plenty strong enough for what it's going to be used for. Ideally you would be able to pull this out and put screws into the side as well but this weighs an absolute ton and pulling it out to get the screws in just wasn't an option so this was the option that I went with and again the wall is actually holding it against the unit itself as well. Attaching the left hand side board was even more difficult than the right hand side because of the radiator. 
to combat that I cut it in half um, where one of the horizontal slats were and I then marked across underneath and I added the mitre bond on those marks so it was already glued to the surface. I then just needed to shove it back against the wall and then the next day was ready for painting. Okay so today was the day that I forgot my camera so I'm filming these parts on my phone. The first thing I needed to do was I needed to smooth off all the face edges of this MDF because if you start painting the face edge before you've smoothed it off it's absolutely horrendous and it ends up just not working that well and just soaking in the paint. So I use 120 grit sandpaper on my sanding block and I just go along the surface of all of them and just give it a good sand. Now it's really difficult to do with my phone in my hand so I just did a little section and I'll show you the finished result in a second. And this is the finished result of that bottom section after I'd sanded it all. And obviously I put a dust sheet down before I started just so I don't get any sawdust or paint on the floor. After sanding everything I then go back with a paintbrush. This is a brush that I use all the time just for getting dust out of holes and things like that. And you just get all the dust out of all the corners and all the surfaces if you can. And just get as much sawdust off there if you, as possible. If you can use a hoover or anything like that it might take a little bit longer but it, it's a long process anyway so just, just get it out as best you can. For me brushing it out works really well. I also recommend trying to work from the top to the bottom so that when you're brushing the stuff off the top it drops to the bottom. To paint this I used some Crown Vinyl Matte Emulsion. This was white vinyl matte emulsion that had some blue paint mixed into it to mix it to the right colour that I wanted. This is some paint that I also had from a previous project. It was about three quarters of a tin and that managed to do these units as well. If you have a paint scuttle handy I do recommend using a paint scuttle because you can fit far more paint in there than you would a normal roller tray and you end up wasting less time refilling it all the time. I've had this one for about four or five years now which is why you can see it's a bit worse for wear. For me I always paint the corners and the cutting in first because I don't enjoy that process as much as the roller in so I do the bit that I don't like first and then I can do the relaxing part afterwards. One tip that I would have is just keep a damp cloth with you. I keep hold of some wet wipes uh, that way if you do mark anything else like the back wall for example and the radiator here then you can just wipe it straight away and it's not as bad. After doing all the cutting in on the corners I then went back and I did the roller in. As I said all these were filmed on my phone so they're in short little clips so it's not really showing you the full process. The second coat I got the full process of that so I can time lapse the whole thing. The roller in uh, took maybe a minute or two each box so it wasn't horrendous to get done and this paint goes on amazingly well as you can see there that's only one coat on the cutting in and you don't need any undercoat with this stuff it undercoats itself. The only problem I have with painting MDF is generally the face grain and that takes two or three coats with sanding in between. I'll talk you through that in a moment when I show you the process I go through for painting the face grain. When painting the face grain of MDF I always try to use the roller if possible. This makes things so much quicker, so much easier. The paint goes on a lot smoother as well and the edges you have to get them with a brush. Anything that you can't get with a roller you have to get with a brush anyway. But if you can get a roller in and you can use the roller, always use the roller because it just makes things a lot quicker. The only thing you need to worry about really is getting a bit too much paint on the roller and it splodging over the sides but then you can just go back over the edge with the roller and catch those bits that do splodge over. Um, you can even use your finger and wipe them off but just using the roller to catch them generally works pretty well. Okay now we're on to day three and I've left the paint overnight to fully dry, I've come back the next day. This time I did remember my camera and I did remember to get the charger and set it up properly so that we can time lapse this whole thing. 
So now I'm just running over the face grain again with the sandpaper. Again, it's 120 grit on my sanding block and I just go across in blocks of three by three and that just helps keep track of where I am and the bits I've done so I don't end up missing anything. Then I go back and I brush everything out again with the brush ready for painting and this second coat goes on much easier than the first coat. So this is the second coat of the cutting in. Again, I went into the same method of doing the three by three blocks in kind of like an S shaped pattern. And that helps me keep track of where I'm up to and what I need to do next, just so I don't miss anything out and end up having to go back to it or something doesn't look finished. Like I say, this second coat went on extremely well, a lot easier than the first coat and it just took basically a light second coat to finish it off. And then it was just on to the final set of rollering and this was quite relaxing for me knowing I was so much close to being finished. It just spurred me on and just gave me that little bit of energy to just crack on and get it finished. And honestly it probably took about an hour, maybe two just to get these bits done. Again, I used my snaking pattern here. I did four across and then I went up one and did four back onto itself. Because these were eight across, it meant I only needed to do half one side and then half the other side. It helps me keep track of it a lot easier. And it, it went on really, really well. So smooth and so easy because the, f the first coat had just sat onto the surface nice and smoothly anyway. This paint is absolutely amazing. After I'd finished painting the boxes, it was just onto the front, uh, the same way I did the first coat, which was just using the roller to go across the front panels, and once that had dried, it was already nice and smooth from the previous coat and then the sanding in between. Once the paint had fully dried, the final step was to attach this to the wall with a couple of L brackets just to make sure it wasn't going to fall over. I used my Fisher Duo Power 6mm plugs for these. These are absolutely amazing. They hold in um, brick, cement, plasterboard, pretty much anything. Because uh, the way they open up behind the plasterboard just makes things so much easier. And to drill into the wall I used a Bosch multi-purpose bit. These are the blue bits from Bosch, they're absolutely amazing, they go through pretty much anything like butter and it just makes the job so much easier, so much quicker because I can just use my cordless drill without having to drag my SDS out. After a quick tidy up, this is the final result and it turned out absolutely amazing. What do you guys think? Would you do something like this in your house to store your other bits and pieces? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this wasn't too long of a video for you, I know it's me voicing over everything that I was doing, but I wanted to try and get as much information across to you guys as possible, so if you wanted to take on this task yourself, you wanted to do it in your own home, then you can do that. Any tools or equipment or glues and stuff, I will link down below, um, just so you can get your own. and then you can build as well. Some of them will be Amazon affiliate links and if you do click them I do get a bit of a kickback but that's doesn't cost you any extra anyway so if you're feeling a bit generous you can click on that and just buy anything that you're going to buy on Amazon. Anyway it just helps me out, helps the channel grow, helps me get better equipment so I don't have my cameras dying constantly uh, but yeah no it should be brilliant if you could do that. If you did like this video give it a big thumbs up and um, it will help the video grow, more people can see it and hopefully more people will build units like this in their house. If you really, really like this video then click that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this from me. And we are so close to a thousand subscribers, it's unbelievable. So if you could do that, it would help me out massively and it would make me super happy if we could hit a thousand subscribers. Thank you to everybody so far that's subscribed. It's been absolutely amazing. I will see you all in the next video.